Hello, Bobby back with you from Survival Existence. Today I'm going to talk to you about trying to save a little money by spending just a little bit for a little piece of equipment that's called the Kilowatt. Welcome back to Survival Existence. Hello, I'm going to show you today about the Kilowatt EZ, or to be more specific, it's actually model number P as in Paul 4460 Kilowatt EZ, but Kilowatt EZ is just how it's simply named. This particular piece of equipment can tell you how much uh, wattage your pieces of equipment are using, whether it's a television in your house, or stereo, or various other pieces of 110 to 120 volt piece of equipment that will plug into this plug. It will also tell you the amount of hertz, which normally here in the United States, electricity runs at 60 hertz, um, especially coming into a home. It will also tell you the voltage that is coming in, and how many watts a particular piece of equipment, of course, is using. Now, I checked a stereo that I have in my living room. It's really the entire entertainment center, but in this particular case, a stereo with an amplifier and a uh, woofer, subwoofer, was a offending subject. I've noticed here in the past several months since I hooked my stereo back up, my living room, that my electric bill has been slowly creeping up. Uh, nothing just terribly dramatic, but still nonetheless, it's several dollars, and I want to know why, because nothing had changed inside the house, as far as I was aware, other than the stereo. And come to find out, um, using this kilowatt meter, I found out that uh, my particular stereo model that I was using was using, just by simply sitting there plugged up, not even on and working, was using seven cents a day in electricity. And that comes up to right at 50 cents a week or $2.15 a month and $25.28 a year. Uh, which uh, I have pretty much the same setup in my bedroom so that's actually twice that much. So I'm just needlessly spending over $50 a year just by having my stereos plugged in. Now, I've since unplugged them because that's not a whole lot of money in a year's amount of time, but nonetheless, several items like that will slowly creep your uh, electricity expenses up, and I'm just not going to do that. It's senseless. It's a waste of money. But also, I've, like I've said before, whenever I spoke about uh, getting a generator, using a generator, what size of generator to get, and also battery backups, which you can possibly hear running in the background. It's presently charging my batteries. Um, why you do not use a drip coffee maker. A drip coffee maker is power hungry. It's ridiculously expensive as far as usage of power. I went ahead and checked my drip coffee maker earlier this morning and uh, it's like I said before, they're very power hungry and use quite a bit of power. The particular coffee maker I've got is a uh, Mr. Coffee. And it, in and of itself, when it's brewing coffee and the hot plate is warming up, it consumes 850 watts of power, which is a ridiculous amount of power. That's why it's strongly suggested, not only by me, but by many other people that understand electricity and power consumption. It's the very reason why we all suggest that you don't run a drip coffee maker off of your uh, generator or battery backup. It's a waste of power. And as a consequence, you end up having to have a larger generator, which is more expensive in and of itself. And of course, with the larger generator comes higher costs of maintaining that generator and also higher costs of fuel consumption. That's why it's strongly suggested that you simply get uh, a gas can and burner, whether it's propane 
or butane and use a regular percolator to make your coffee. Now, if you just insist on having drip coffee, you can't actually warm up a pan of water and let it slowly run through your drip coffee maker through the basket. But I'm not that particular. Coffee is coffee. I like a good coffee, don't misunderstand that. But nonetheless, I'm perfectly all right with percolated coffee. After checking the stereo and the coffee maker, I checked several several other items. I checked a uh, particularly high-powered computer that belongs to my grandson, and while it's off, it actually barely uses any power at all, and I was actually surprised. I also checked uh, battery chargers on a cell phone and also on a few radios that I have, and uh, they consumed very little. But nonetheless, if you have several chargers, like people quite often do, you know, four or five people in the family have a cell phone, that would come up to a pretty good chunk of change over a year's time. Getting back to the uh, subject of the kilowatt, these particular meters are relatively simple to use. And of course, it comes with instructions, and I'd strongly suggest keeping the instructions unless you're going to use this piece of equipment regularly, or you'll simply forget how to uh, do it. Now, it has no more, of course, than five buttons on it, but you'd be surprised what you'll forget in a year's time. But in order to use this particular meter, you, of course, normally plug it in a wall. I have it in an extension cord so that I can have it out and be able to uh, see it reasonably with the camera. But you plug your, your meter into a uh, receptacle and how you start out is you press and hold the reset button and it comes up reset and it'll cut off in just a couple of seconds. After that, you press and hold the set button and it'll bring up the amount of, of uh, money that each kilowatt hour costs you. Um, where I live at, I had checked a couple of years ago and of course it may have potentially went up since then, but for the first thousand kilowatts, the cost of each uh, kilowatt is uh, a little over 11 cents. After your first thousand kilowatts, it drops down to 0 0.085 cents per kilowatt hour, which isn't horrible. It's been better, but <laughs> nonetheless, it could be much worse. But once this display is flashing like that, you press the up and down buttons, you can move your price up or your price down, depending on what uh, your cost of electricity is. And of course, you can call your electric provider and they can tell you. But once you have that set, the amount of uh, cost per kilowatt hour, you simply press the set button again, it'll flash save, and then it comes back in this particular case to how many volts and it says right up in that little right corner, which is difficult for you to see, I know, but it tells you how many volts are coming into your house. At this particular plug, at this particular time, 121.1 volts is coming in through this receptacle. But there are several other settings. Uh, this one tells you what hertz the electricity is running at, which is generally at 60 hertz, which is a regular U.S. residential uh, frequency for electric service. But you can scroll through several other settings and uh, it'll tell you. Of uh, particular interest to you will perhaps be the watts setting. That tells you how many watts is actually coming through this meter. That's how you know how many watts something's using. You might say, well, how will that help me? Uh, if you are planning on running anything with a generator during a power outage or with a uh, battery bank backup, wattage becomes very important. Um, the items that you feel like you need to run, you need to know how many watts they run so you know what size generator to get and if you can actually run this particular item reasonably off a generator or a battery backup is certainly important, or solar cells. It can tell you 
what the power consumption is in watts. Therefore, you know how large of a generator that uh, you're going to reasonably need or battery backup or the amount of solar cells and power that you may need. Now, of course, right now that's showing zero watts because nothing's plugged in and running right now. Next, it'll tell you how many amps something is drawing, which can be quite important whenever you have a particular circuit or uh, with an extension cord. It's very important how many amps you're actually running through a particular gauge of wire. Um, run entirely too much amperage through too small a gauge of wire and you're certainly going to end up with short and potentially a fire. That's why that's so important. And of course we come back to volts. We just scroll through with the menu. This tells you your cost. Once you get to cost, you can press your up and down buttons and it tells you cost per hour to operate something, cost per day, cost per week, and per month, and your yearly costs, which can be a great deal of information if you're trying to uh, cut back on costs. In just a minute, I'll be back with you and we'll plug something up in here and we'll see what the power consumption is and the potential cost per year. Okay, I have plugged in a power supply, a, to be more specific, a 35 amp power supply that I have here in my radio shack and storage room for various items. And uh, we're going to see what kind of uh, power consumption we use. And I, no more often than what I run the power supply, it of course will tell us if it was on constantly and been used at the same rate, what the cost per year would be. And of course it's not on all the time like some other items, but nonetheless, let's uh, scroll through here to our voltage setting and we'll move all the way to watts. Okay, now we've got this kilowatt EZ meter setting on watts and I'm going to turn my 35 amp power supply on. Now, the items that I have wired to it are not turned on at this time, so it's not going to be under a full load. But this power supply is converting, of course, the AC house current that come in to DC 12 volts and then it has the potential for a peak of 35 amps draw, depending on how much equipment you have on it. Now it's showing 56.1 watts of power consumption just simply being turned on. Now I'm going to turn on an HF radio I have. Let's see if it changes. And of course it did because there's more power draw coming out. What we had seen before with its setting was just simply the uh, power supply converting AC to DC. Of course, it's still consuming power. It's still going to make the 12 volts at 35 amps available for any item. So it's still going to use power, whether it's being used by a particular radio or not. But at this point, with this HF radio on, it's consuming 89 to 90 watts. If we want to see some of the other settings. This is how many amps it's drawing just sitting here receiving, which is a little over one amp. Power coming through to the power supply is 120 and a half volts. These other settings really aren't important to you. But if you'll notice under load, the uh, frequency of the electricity is staying stable, which is quite important. It can vary some and not be an issue to your electronic equipment. Uh, it varies widely. It can be disastrous. But that's how many watts we're running. It's 89 to just over 90 watts. Now I'll turn that off. Let's see where we go. And of course, we return down generally where we were to begin with. Now, with me turning this radio back on, once you've hooked something up, you need to reset everything. 
or if you've unplugged and replugged or changed anything at all, you always reset this meter so it'll tell you. Make sure the amount per kilowatt hour is still where you want it. Press set again and of course it comes back to voltage. Now I'm going to press menu and I'm going to go to cost. And I'm going to scroll down to hour showing one cent per hour be 24 cents per day be a dollar 71 per week per month seven dollars and 35 cents and per year eighty eight dollars and 48 cents now like I said my power supply and radios don't stay on all the time but no stretch of the imagination but nonetheless you know how much it costs you actually we will of course go back to our costs so you know per hour it's costing you one penny per hour or if you have the radio on all day it costs you 24 cents now of course this radio is only receiving if it was transmitting and putting out power then it would certainly go up more than that check back to our wattage showing at 89.8 right at 90 watts needless to say a little meter like this it's not very expensive and it can potentially save you a great deal of money just simply by uh, getting rid of the power suckers in your house unplugging them put them on a power strip and cutting them off if you don't want to plug them in unplug them all the time which I strongly suggest doing that instead of wearing so much on your receptacles in your house and having to replace them. But one of these meters will pay for itself easily depending on what you're running all the time inside your house in less than a year and potentially save you a whole lot of money in addition to being able to uh, tell what the power consumption is of particular items in your house saving on the amount of electricity that you're using from your power company. This has been Bobby with Survival Existence, helping you help yourself. Come visit us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See ya!